<clears throat> it is a great honour tonight to receive the Sydney Peace Prize for the Uluru Statement from the Heart on behalf of myself, Pat Anderson and Noel Pearson. I acknowledge the presence of Mark Liebler here tonight, who was the co-chair of the Referendum Council, and we recognise and celebrate the men and women of the Uluru Dialogues who are here tonight. We also recognise those Dialogue members who have since passed since the Uluru Statement from the Heart was issued. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the extraordinary leadership of Pat Anderson. Noel would agree with me in saying that Pat's formidable leadership style really made this happen and led to the consensus at Uluru. The Uluru Statement from the Heart and the Law Reform Proposal Voice Makarata was a game changer for the nation in what was a languishing reconciliation and recognition process in Australia. It was the culmination of an Australian innovation, the First Nations Regional Constitutional Dialogues that were conducted in 2016 and 2017 to elicit from a sample of First Nations communities what meaningful constitutional recognition is to them. It sets out a roadmap for change for the nation, developed by our people in their own voices, because it is our own people in their own communities who know best, who know what is best for their communities. This is what the Indigenous right to self-determination is about. The First Nations Regional Dialogues were conducted under the auspices of the Referendum Council, which were the first of its kind since the Australian Constitutional Order commenced in 1901. Many Australians know that the First Nations were excluded from the drafting of the Australian Constitution. Therefore, this process, the dialogue process, was unprecedented in our history and of the National Constitutional Convention held in 2017, it is the first time a constitutional convention has been convened with and for First Nations people. Thus, the dialogue process and the Uluru Statement from the Heart is a profound response to the historical exclusion of First Nations peoples from the Australian constitutional system. It is a profound response to the question, what does repair look like? 2017 was the year First Nations people issued the Uluru Statement from the Heart to the Australian people as an invitation. It was an important year. It was the 50th anniversary of the 1967 referendum. It was the 25th anniversary of the High Court's decision in Mabo. It was the 20th anniversary of the Bringing Them Home report. And it was 10 years since the suite of legislation known as the Northern Territory Emergency Response. Each of these anniversaries bring with them a sentiment Aboriginal people know only too well, that the law can oppress and the law can redeem. We know much about how the law can oppress. The law has played a role in the dispossession, oppression and subjugation of First Nations people from the frontier wars to Australia's lengthy period of compulsory racial segregation, benignly known as the Protection Era, to forced assimilation, to stolen children and stolen wages. It is well known, at least in Aboriginal communities, that as the Constitution and the Federation and Australia's nationhood came into being, our people were being forced from country, herded onto reserves and missions. Unbeknown to many Australians, from the late 1890s, Aboriginal people were the subject of draconian protection laws. 
protection was required in part to prevent Aboriginal people from being indiscriminately murdered. It was the tail end of what we now know as Australia's first wars, the frontier wars. My Davis family are Cobble Cobble people and they come from Warra, which is Barangam speaking country, the lands bordering the Bunya Mountains and stretching out across the Condamine River. They were moved to the Barumba Reserve, run by the Salvation Army at the turn of the century around Federation. This reserve is now known as Sherberg. This move to protection is described in a book by Queensland historian Tom Blake called Dumping Ground, a history of the Sherberg settlement. He writes, in the early months of 1901, as white Australians were undergoing their rite of passage into nationhood, another group of Australians were also participating in a rite of passage, but of a different kind. In the Burnett district of southeast Queensland, remnants of the Waka Waka tribe were being rounded up and dumped on a reserve on the banks of Barumba Creek. From camps on the fringes of towns and station properties, they had been forced onto an Aboriginal settlement established ostensibly for their care and protection. For the Waka Waka, their rite of passage was not into nationhood or independence, but into institutionalization and domination. The two rituals were diametrically opposed. The brutality of the Australian state towards Aboriginal people imbues our constitutional order to this day. It is why I became a constitutional lawyer. Because constitutions can create the material conditions for a dignified human life. Constitutions can provide the fundamental resources and material conditions that humans need to live a flourishing life and for Indigenous self-determination. This is what a constitutionally guaranteed seat at the table on decisions made about our lives looks like. The right to participate in democratic decision-making about our lives. The Sherberg community has worked together to reclaim the old discarded ration shed, a symbol of the brutal regime of protection and unfreedom, where peas and porridge, flour, tea, tea sugar and rice, and salt were rationed out to people on the reserve. The old shed that was lying discarded in a field has been restored together with the dormitories, and today it is a thriving cultural precinct and includes an archive where Aboriginal people can research their family history on the reserve. Sherberg's journey is an important one for the nation. In Sherberg, they have reclaimed something that was brutal, even as the psychological and social manifestations of unfreedom linger in their community. This community has turned these dwellings into institutions of memory, survival, and reconciliation, coming to terms with the past. This is the process our own nation is embarking on. The law can oppress, yes, but the law can also redeem. The Uluru Statement from the Heart has emerged from a constitutional recognition process in Australia that seeks now to imbue the voice of First Nations people in the constitutional system to anchor a process of agreement making and truth telling to follow. The exigency of the voice to parliament is that the status quo is not working for our people and most Australians can see that. 
Closing the gap is not working for our people and in many areas is going backward. The Uluru Statement is much more, though, than this. After all that has happened, the question was, what does repair look like? Repair looks like voice, Makarata. Voice, treaty, then truth. When we ran the First Nations Dialogues, a deliberative process aimed at eliciting from communities what meaningful constitutional recognition looks like, many of our people were cynical, and they deserved to be cynical. We said to them, law reform is about imagination. Law reform requires us to exercise our imagination and dream of a better day. What does a better world look like? Imagine that Australia can be a better place for your family and your children and your grannies. Suspend your disbelief that Australia cannot change. Suspend your disbelief that you won't be heard. And on the second day of the dialogues, they turned up, rolled up their sleeves and got to work. These men and women, old and young, of the Uluru Dialogues gave up three days of their time to come and talk about the Australian Constitution and to talk about how to improve our democracy, not just for them, but for all Australians. We decided to present the Uluru Statement from the heart to the Australian people, not to the politicians. This is not about politicians. This is about Australians working together, like we did in 1967. At The Rock, we decided that we were going to stare down the camera and we were going to talk directly to the Australian people about why we needed change, about why we need constitutional change. And we decided that we were going to animate their agency and ask Australians to use their voice to help us get this reform across the line. Because retail Australian politics and ideology and set positions and tribalism and left and right will not get us there. The Constitution is meant to change. It is built to change by us, the Australian people. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is an invitation, a gift to the Australian people. Stan Grant Senior says that language is not about who you are, but about where you are, where we are. When people say that this is about changing Australian identity, it is not. It's about location. We are located here together and we have to coexist in a peaceful way. We're about to face, as a population, and are already facing, some really serious existential crisis as a people, as humankind, as the climate changes and the planet warms up. The fundamental message that a lot of elders and traditional owners in the dialogue said in, in both the dialogues and the National Convention at Uluru, was that to face this battle together, the country needs peace. And the country cannot be at peace until we start to resolve this issue, the original grievance. And the Uluru Statement from the Heart is the beginning of that. Yes, Australia's democracy has been a successful democracy but not for all, and not for the First Peoples. And after everything that has happened to our people, the killings, the massacres, the genocide, the compulsory racial segregation and protection, the stealing of children and of wages and of land, and the contemporary manifestation of this, youth detention, 
child detention, youth suicide, incarceration, child removals. Despite all of this, they chose love. They spoke of love. They spoke of the Uluru Statement from the heart. They spoke of peace. They issued an olive branch to the Australian people. And they offer this to you sitting in this room tonight. An invitation, an invitation to walk with us. We gathered at the 2017 National Constitutional Convention, coming from all points of the southern sky, make this statement from the heart. Our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander tribes were the first sovereign nations of the Australian continent and its adjacent islands and possessed it under our own laws and customs. This our ancestors did according to the reckoning of our culture from the creation, according to the common law from time immemorial, and according to science more than 60,000 years ago. This sovereignty is a spiritual notion, the ancestral tie between the land or mother nature and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who were born therefrom remain attached thereto and must one day return thither to be united with our ancestors. This link is the basis of the ownership of the soil, or better, of sovereignty. It has never been ceded or extinguished and coexists with the sovereignty of the Crown. How could it be otherwise that peoples possessed a land for 60 millennia and this sacred link disappears from world history in merely the last 200 years? With substantive constitutional change and structural reform, we believe that this ancient sovereignty can shine through as a fuller expression of Australia's nationhood. Proportionally, we are the most incarcerated people on the planet. We are not an innately criminal people. Our children are aliened from their families at unprecedented rates. This cannot be because we have no love for them. And our youth languish in detention in obscene numbers. They should be our hope for the future. These dimensions of our crisis tell plainly the structural nature of our problem. This is the torment of our powerlessness. We seek constitutional reforms to empower our people and take a rightful place in our own country. When we have power over our destiny, our children will flourish. They will walk in two worlds and their culture will be a gift to their country. We call for the establishment of a First Nations voice enshrined in the constitution Makarata is the culmination of our agenda, the coming together after a struggle. It captures our aspirations for a fair and truthful relationship with the Australian people and a better future for our children based on justice and self-determination. We seek a Makarata Commission to supervise a process of agreement making between governments and First Nations and truth telling about our history. In 1967, we were counted. In 2017, we seek to be heard. We leave base camp and start our trek across this vast country. And we invite you to walk with us in a movement of the Australian people for a better future. Thank you.